Earlier, our CBSN political reporter Caitlin Huey Burns spoke to Anton Gunn. He's a former South Carolina state representative and author of The Presidential Principles. She asked him about what kind of message South Carolina primary is going to send. I think it's going to send a very important message, a big message. So the first three contests are not really representative of the Democratic Party in terms of the diversity of the electorate. Iowa, we know what it looked like. New Hampshire, we know both of those states are uh, largely white. Nevada, which has a large ethnicity of his Hispanics that participate. The concern would be with, with Nevada is that it was only 14,000 people because it's a caucus. But we have over 1 million non-white registered voters in South Carolina. So that means this electorate will be the first time African Americans show up. And so who they decide is the best to move the party forward will send a very strong message. Well, Joe Biden has really staked it all in South Carolina. He's called it his firewall. Why do you think that is for him? And do you think he's going to have a big victory here tonight? Yeah, so I'll say Joe Biden uh, has enjoyed a great position being vice president to the first African-American president, Barack Obama. Mm -hmm. That has given him an extra advantage over other candidates because of his close connection to Obama. And this state is very loyal to Barack Obama, actually made Barack Obama uh, into position to become the nominee, South Carolina did in 2007, 2008. So that's going to give Joe Biden a whole lot of leg up in the process. But the question is, how does it show up and what does it mean for him going forward? I think he will do well here tonight. The question is how big. Mm -hmm. If Joe Biden wins by less than 10 points, then I think, you know, it's to be expected that he was going to win South Carolina. So that's not anything earth shattering. Mm -hmm. But if he wins by more than 15 or 20 points in his primary, it'll say that the base of the Democratic Party, which is mm -hmm. largely African-Americans, have spoken who they want to be their candidate. And this state is seen as kind of the gateway to Super Tuesday, where you're going to have a quick turnaround, just a couple of days, really. Uh, California, Texas, these big states, these diverse states. What kind of springboard does South Carolina provide for those states? Well, normally I would say Super Tuesday uh, is completely informed by what happens in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. However, because it's only three days between them, that's mm -hmm. number one. Uh, I think it'll have less of an impact. There's mm -hmm. less of a time for a candidate to build that momentum in a Super Tuesday. Mm -hmm. The second challenge is, is that turnout has been light here today, mm -hmm. and but absentee ballots are up. That means more people have made their decision long ago. So mm -hmm. did they make their decision after seeing Pete Buttigieg win in Iowa? Did they make their decision mm -hmm. after Bernie Sanders won New Hampshire? If they made their decisions, those two candidates might have a leg up on Super Tuesday, where Joe Biden might enjoy a victory here, but it may not carry over to those major states. But I will say this is a southern state, the first in the south. South Carolina is the first in the south. There are other southern states that are going to be the gateway to the nomination. So Alabama, mm -hmm. Tennessee, Virginia, all of those states mm -hmm. will send a very strong message around what African-American voters and southerners think about the democratic process and he, who these candidates are. So it could be really mm -hmm. surprising to see who rolls in a Super Tuesday and does very well. Interesting, because there hasn't been much suspense here on the ground, just given that Joe Biden yeah. has maintained a pretty consistent lead. Yeah. Do you think that's going to have an impact on turnout? Do you think people will say, well, we kind of know who we expect to win? Yeah, I, so I do think this. This is what I will say. Uh, Joe Biden was going to win all along, but the fact that absentee ballots are up says to me that one of these candidates had a sophisticated operation mm. to get their voters out early. Mm. Was that Bernie Sanders? And will he show up second in this race? Was it Elizabeth Warren? And will she show up higher than she's shown in other places? Or is it Pete Buttigieg? And will he show up in a large way? We don't know yet. So I think the surprise may not be Biden winning, but who does well in second place or who does well in third place, particularly if they didn't do well in the previous primary states. Mm, so maybe a race for second place. Um, Tom Steyer, someone who's invested a lot of time here. He's on air everywhere, yes. but he has a pretty uh, big ground operation as well. How do you think he'll do tonight? Is what we're seeing in the polls representative of what you are seeing on the ground? Yeah, I will say without a doubt, Tom Steyer has probably been a candidate that's still in the race that invested the most. There was another mm. candidate who invested a lot in South Carolina, Cory Booker, mm. who dropped out. But Tom Steyer has invested the most in South Carolina. And I see it and I feel it on the ground from a grassroots level what he's doing. So the question is, can he pull a surprising third place finish or second place finish? I don't think he has enough to overtake Biden, may not have enough to overtake Bernie, but I do know that I believe that he'll show up. It'll, it, I'd be surprised with given his investment that he doesn't show up at least in the top three or four. And then finally, uh, Congressman Clyburn 
big kingmaker in this yes. state. He endorsed, endorsed Joe Biden. What kind of impact does that have? How consequential is that kind of endorsement? So when it comes to South Carolina politics, there's no greater statement than Congressman Jim Clyburn. His leadership is legendary in the state, his commitment to the state, and his understanding of the pulse of the people of South Carolina. So the fact that he gave his endorsement to Joe Biden will send a very strong message to anybody who had not decided. And there were still a lot of undecided voters up until about 48 hours ago. So his endorsement will be big. It'll put some people over the top, particularly older African Americans who are in a lot of the rural communities in South Carolina. They're probably going to go for Biden because Clyburn went for Biden. He's a senior statesman who has the pulse on the people of this state. And I truly believe that it helped Biden tremendously. And if he didn't get that endorsement, who knows how Biden's margin would be. Maybe he's a single digit winner before that, mm. but I definitely think he's double digit with Con Congressman Clyburn uh, in his corner. Carry, carry through the finish line. Thank you so much, Thank Anton. You. Good to see you. You too as Thank well. You. Thank you.